Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is going to be our Bonske preview for the Haru Basho. And chances are we're going to get the results back before the Iowa caucus results. That is very true and topical. Good job, Jake. Yeah, current events. But let's let's skip past all the politics talk because there's there's no good dredging. <laughs> That's been into enough that. of that. Yeah, <laughs> no good bringing up any of that and shaming our state even further. <laughs> so yeah, I don't really think that we really need much preamble. Might as well just get right on into the Bonds K prediction. I'm tired of small talk. I demand numbers. Uh, I, I have names. And their number ranking. Whatever. You know what I want. Give it to me. Starting with the number Yokozuna. <laughs> on the east side, I think we're going to have Hakuho. And on the west side, we're going to have Kakuryu. They both ended up with a 1-14 and 14 record. Um, Kakuryu lasted one day longer than Hakuho did, but obviously both of them pulled out. Are you, uh, or sorry, which order do you think they're going to be in first? I got Hakuho remaining on the east side and Kakuryu remaining on the west side. Is that uh, just because of inertia, they're going to stay where they're at, or is Kakuryu losing one more time it's a big enough deal, or what do you think? So, it, typically, it's whoever has the better record is going to be on the east side, and the whoever has the worst record is going to be on the west side, and if they have the same record, no reason to flip them switch them around there is some recent precedent of yokozuna with the same record switching their order however in kyushu of 2018 when we had kisei nosato in the mix as a yokozuna we had hakuho and kakuryu both did not enter that basho and kisei nosato did enter that basho but he didn't win any matches going 0 and 4 before pulling out and then for the Hatsu 2019 Basho, which ended up being Kisei Nosato's last Basho, he did end up jumping Hakuho and Kakuryu in the order. Um, I'm assuming because he entered the Basho, even though no Yokozuna got to win that tournament. Right, so it's possible that participating at all has some value to the Bonsuke community. Yeah, so it's possible that... Yeah, Hakuho and Kakuryu ended up with the same record, but Kakuryu lasted longer than Hakuho did, so maybe he jumps ha- over Hakuho here. But I, I just don't see that happening. I think it's different. It would have been different if Hakuho didn't show up at all, and maybe Kakuryu got like sure. 0 and 2 and then pulled out. But I think since they did both show up, Kakuryu just lasting one more day, and it's not like that day got him an extra win or anything. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think our Yokozuna are going to stay in the same order as they were last time. Who's going to be the next one after the Yokozuna? Uh, the next one is going to be our only Ozeki. Oh, you don't say. That is going to be Takakesho. He will be on the east side, as that is the most prestigious side. And he is going to be making this pretty easy for probably at least another Basho or two on the order of the Ozeki, because it's kind of hard to mess up one guy in what <laughs> order they go into. I believe in you, though. <laughs> I'll find a way. <laughs> but we do have this interesting little nugget, since we do only have one Ozeki for... The first time since 1982. Oh, holy cow. I believe. Uh, so how the bonds Ks are written, it's not written like if you go to Sumo Database where it's two names vertical down a list. Like it's uh, the names are written up and down, and then there's literally two different sides to it. There's an east side and a west side. And so you need – and. It, how it works is you need to have two Ozeki at all times because you need one on the east side, one on the west side. Same with the Sekiwake, same with the Komosubis. You need an east one, you need a west one. Doesn't apply to Yokozuna because technically Yokozuna are Ozeki with special rights. Um, So what they do in the case where you have one Ozeki and a Yokozuna on the west side of the Bonske, you get an Yokozuna Ozeki which is kind of not really as 
it doesn't really mean all that much. It's not an actual rank, right? It's just like how they're written on the ranking document. Literally, all it is is Kakuryu's name will be written twice as big so that he can fill up both the Yokozuna <laughs> and Ozeki slot side by side. There is nothing that is going to change for him there. Uh, he's still going to have his own Dohyo Iri. He's still going to be called Yokozuna. He's still going to participate in the last matches of Vasho as the Yokozuna does. Literally nothing changes for him except his name is going to be double wide on the Bonske. Sounds actually kind of prestigious then. Yeah, it's pretty, it, <laughs> it is pretty cool, but he is still going to be on the least, less prestigious west side of the Bonske. Gotcha. So maybe if you had poor eyesight, this is actually something you'd want, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so there, since this is something that doesn't happen very often, do want to kind of delve more into some history on no, it? No, I don't. Too bad. I already did, and I'm not going to let that research go to waste. All right. Actually, I didn't do... I'm just along for the ride. I didn't do this research. I have to give the credit to Kelv SYC on the Sumo subreddit, who provided a post about the history of Yokozuna Ozeki. I'm not going to go into all of that. Uh, just know that it's it's actually happened about once a decade from the 30s to the 80s, and then we had this big almost 40-year gap between instances of oh, requiring a Yokozuna Ozeki because we did not have enough Ozeki on the Bonske. So the last time it happened, uh, the situation started in Natsu of 1981 when Ozeki Masuyama retired, leaving Chiyonofuji as the only Ozeki for Natsu and Nagoya. Wakanohana II was listed as Yokozuna Ozeki for both of those ba Basho as there were two Yokozuna and he was on the west side which is our exact current scenario. Gotcha. We have two Yokozuna, but only one Ozeki. But it got a little weirder, because in Aki of 1981, Chiyo no Fuji was promoted to Yokozuna, leaving nobody in the Ozeki ranks. Huh. So Kita no Umi and Chiyo no Fuji both were Yokozuna Ozeki for this Basho. That's funny, because those are like two of the top five all-time Yokozuna. <laughs> yep. And so Wakanohana, he was actually uh, Yokozuna to east but i guess based on how the bonds k is drawn it made it makes more sense to have like the first rank yokozuna as the uh yokozuna ozeki i believe maybe might have to pull up that bonds k to double check that but yeah we had two yokozuna ozeki for that basho and then in kyushu of 1981 kotokaze was promoted to ozeki for that tournament and was the sole ozeki during kyushu and hatsu until Takano Sato was promoted to Ozeki for Haru, and so Kita no Umi was a Yokozuna Ozeki for Kyushu of 1981 and Hatsu of 1982. And so Kita no Umi, until either Hakuho or Kakuryu, probably Kakuryu, was our last Yokozuna Ozeki that was in Sumo, which once again means basically nothing. His name's just written double wide on a piece of paper. And since then, everyone has just decided, like, no, nah, that's silly. We're just going to rig it so there's only there's always two Ozeki. I, I don't think we should use the word rigging, given oh, no, it's Sumo's all work, history. Right? <laughs> it's all the work. Giving the history They just of don't want to have complicated bonds case. <laughs> well, they messed up then, <laughs> based on what we've currently got. But yeah, so that's, that's everything that's going on with Yokozuna Ozeki. It's kind of really overblown. It's more of just a interesting nugget than anything that's going to actually affect the tournament whatsoever uh are we allowed to make fun of cocker you slightly more than normal you can it won't actually mean anything mm -hmm. but you can i think it will <laughs> okay it'll get on Flarek's nerves yeah and it's not like they're going to announce him as yokozuna ozeki at the basho <laughs> either literally nothing will change for cocker except his name will be the biggest Let's move on <laughs> to the Sekiwake rank. We're on the east side. We will have Asanoyama. And for the first time in quite a while on the west side, we're not going to have an Ozeki that was demoted <laughs> stealing the west Sekiwake slot from another deserving Rikshi. So it's... I'd kind of gotten used to it, though. Yeah, I know. It's, it's kind of nice and refreshing having it like this. <laughs> so it's going to come down to... One of three guys, either Endo, who had a 9-6 record at Magashira 1, 
Hokuto Fuji, who had 11 and 4 record, just at Maegashira 2, so just one behind Endo, or Shodai, who had a 13 and 2 record at Maegashira 4. I'm going to kind of eliminate Endo right away. I think Hokuto Fuji's 11 and 4 is just going to jump him immediately. That's not a even going to put cook him in there, there. maybe. No, not not even a little. I'm still going to accuse you of it pretty much every time. Endo has you know, no whatever. shot of getting that Sekiwake slot. <laughs> um, and so it really comes down to Hokuto Fuji and Shodai. And I'm going to lean on the side of Shodai uh, because he has two more wins. And he wasn't really ranked too far below Hokuto Fuji. He faced all the same guys as Hokuto Fuji did. Uh, and he ended up with a better record. Uh, Hokuto Fuji did end up with a Kinboshi. Shodai never had that opportunity, but I think the 13 and 2 record is going to stand because I don't really think they care who you beat too much. Yeah, but I mean it, it. It evens out for strength of competition because once those Yokozunas were out, Shodai was facing all the same exact top guys. I yeah, so I, I see what you mean there. It, it might be a consideration that Hokuto Fuji beat a Yokozuna, but I think it's going to be pretty far down the list. I think it's more just going to be, yep, 13-2 and two at Maegashira 4. That's a little bit better than 11-4 and four at Maegashira 2. Yeah, he's the, he's the Sekiwake. And when there are five Yokozuna losses going around on the, on the Dohyo, you know, it kind of marginalizes it. A little bit. Miyogiryu, two Kimboshi, really? Really? Really. Really. Yeah. So that's what I got at the Sekiwake rank. At Komosubi, I have on the east side there, Hokuto Fuji, as I said, jumping over Endo there. And on the west side, we are going to have Endo. I really don't think they're going to do anything weird like push Hokuto Fuji up to like a third Sekiwake slot or anything like that. Uh, really don't have a great candidate that would take over like the second Komosubi spot if that were to happen, if like Endo was our East Komosubi. Uh, so I think it just makes sense to have those guys as your two Komosubi instead of trying to fill up the Sanyaku ranks at all. Right, nothing weird enough to do anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, and finally we don't have to talk about Abi on the Komosubi rank and why he <laughs> is not creating a third Sekiwake slot himself as he got a 5-10 and 10 record, and we'll get to him later. I'd also gotten used to, and Komosubi 1 will be Abi. Yep, nope, not anymore. We got Hokuto Fuji there now. Truly, uh, truly exciting times. So now we will move on to the Zone of Death, and that is the top-ranked Maegashira people who will have to face all seven of the Sanyaku ranks. So maybe, <laughs> maybe a zone of coma. Oh, like, yeah. not, not quite dead. Not great, but you're, it's not going to kill you either. A zone of, like, mild discomfort. Yeah. We a might zone not... of, like, having that one spot on your back kind of itchy. Not bad enough that you like need to ask someone else to do it, but it's itchy enough that you remember it. We'll workshop that. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll shoot it over to Flarek and Max, see what they can come up with. But at Magashira 1 on the east side, I think we're going to have Daisho dropping just a half rank down from his Komosubi west slot down to the Magashira 1 east side after his 7-8 and eight record. And then on the west side, I think we are going to have Takayasu. So... Maegashira 1, that's the typical landing spot for a 7 and 8 Komosubi and a 6 and 9 Sekiwake, especially with this Bonske where the guys who are pushing for like the Maegashira 1 spots are kind of pretty far down the Bonske and they were outside of the joy. So I feel pretty good that these guys aren't going to fall any further than Maegashira 1. Yeah, other than Shodai, like from Maegashira 3 to like 7, you know, where you're kind of in range of getting up towards the top, there's not a whole lot going on. No, your best guy there is going to be Onosho with a 9-6 and six record, but yeah. he, you're not going to push for Maegashira 1 with a 9-6 and six record. That's not worth 6 ranks up? No, not at all. On to Maegashira 2, on the east side, we are going to have Yutakayama. He, I have him jumping up 7 ranks from Maegashira 9 with 11 and 4 record, which is kind of what you would expect for an 11 and 4 record that's right in line. And then on the west side, I'm going to have Okinoumi. Uh, I actually initially had Ryuden going where Okinoumi is, but as I always say, kind of give the benefit of the doubt to the guy that's in the zone of death in the joy that's gone up against the Sanyaki ranks. Ryuden did not have that. And so I'm going to have Okinoumi jump up to Magashir 2 for Magashir 4 after his 8-7 and seven record. And we also need to keep in the back of our mind Toku Shoryu for this whole thing. He was oh, all the way do. down at Magashir 17, but he had a 
14 and one record. Did he win the U show or something? He, I don't remember talking about he this. He did exactly winning the U show and something. Wow, that is very unexpected. Uh, yeah, and unprecedented, which makes it really hard to figure out where they're going to put him. I don't, I don't think they're going to do anything crazy like creating. Maybe Tokushoryu is a guy that they create a uh, new Komosubi or Sekiwake rank for, but I, I don't see that happening. Nah, just, just put him at the other Ozeki. <laughs> Get rid of this Kakaryu confusion. <laughs> there you go. That, that, that's a solution that everybody will like, except that the Bonsuke committee already announced that there's going to be a Yokozuna Ozeki on the Bonsuke, since they've already I, made I the Bonsuke. I wonder if it'll be Tokushoryu. <laughs> <laughs> just, just move on. This joke is dying. <laughs> it was dead to start off with. So, East, Maegashira 2, we have Yutakiyama, West, Okinoumi. So, Maegashira 3 on the East side, that's where I have Duyuden going after a 10-5 and 5 record from Maegashira 8, jumping up five spots, exactly what we would expect to see from him. Mitakiyumi, we got him at the Maegashira 3 West slot. I almost dropped him to Maegashira 4 here, and this is almost where I slotted Toku Shoryu. But I actually found something kind of interesting on our Sumo database that we love to use so it's not really all that rare to see someone with a seven and eight record drop like drop one or two numbered ranks. So a fall from Magashira two to Magashira four wouldn't be all that uncommon. Sure. Or so I thought. Oh no. Apparently it has only happened once in Kyushu of two thousand and four since nineteen ninety three, where Magashira two with a seven and eight record dropped to Magashira four. And it's not like it it's a rare record from that rank. It's happened 39 times <laughs> in those 27 what years the hell? where Magashira 2 has gone 7 and 8, and they just for some reason they've never made it down to Magashira 4. And so it's always less of a drop than that. It'll saying. either be like Magashira 2 East, where they like keep their rank, don't move at all, drop down to Magashira 2 West, or either hit the Magashira 3 East or West slots. Except gotcha. for that one time in 2004, in the past 27 years, in 39 times, it's only happened once. That is bizarre. Yeah, it, I just found that fascinating. So no, I'm not going to drop Mitake Yumi down to Maegashira <laughs> 4. We're going to leave him at Maegashira 3. Maybe not do that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, Maegashira 4 on the east side. This is where we are going to place your Hatsu Yusha winner. Almost said Haru. Still kind of mix those up in my mind. It was a good uh, mid-word recovery there. Yeah. Well done. Uh, Tokushoryu, Maegashira 4 east. And on the west side, we're going to have Enho, who will be at his career high. Uh, don't know how confident I am in the Tokushoryu one, because like I said, there's literally no precedent to go on for an Magashira 17 getting 14 wins. How, what, uh, what do you think is like the range of possibilities? Like what's the highest and lowest rank you think he might end up at? I think he has an outside shot of two. Now he has an outside shot of Magashira one. I gotcha. don't think it's going to happen. I think, but it's possible. Uh, and then the lowest I could see him going is like Magashira six to seven. Uh, if so, a, a much wider range than you know, yeah. normally would estimate any given wrestler, right? Yeah, exactly. So, like I said, there's no precedent for Magashira 17 getting 14 wins. In fact, only five Rikshi ever ranked Magashira 10 or below have ever gotten 14 wins, oh, including cow. Toku Shoryu. <laughs> huh. I mean... You don't expect 14 wins is something Yokozuna do. Yeah, I and, mean, it makes sense, but, like, it's it's still it, it, it kind of like that Mitakeyumi fact. It's just like, that is, I, I would have guessed in the hundred or so years that we have data for, you know, that that wouldn't happen more often. But, yeah. But I suppose the 15 matches, that only goes back to, like, what, the 50s, maybe? 40s, 50s, something like that, after Somewhere World War Two. Okay, so, yeah, we got, like, maybe 80 years of almost the exact same yeah. lineup. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. So, and I also have written my notes. You kind of already hit on it, but yeah, I don't think he's going to go much higher than Magashira four. If he does go higher, and I have written down specifically, there's zero chance he gets into the Sanyaku ranks. Well, we will have at least one precedent now. Yes. Probably never to be seen again. <laughs> So we're going to move on to the mid Bonsuke. Actually, no. Uh, I kind of messed up. The Joy is going to go all the way down to Magashira 5 East, now that we only have seven guys oh, in the Sanyaku ranks. We need to get nine dudes up there to fill it up to 16 people. So to finish out the zone of mild irritation, 
I have Abi at Magashira 5 East dropping down five ranks after his 5-10 and 10 record as Como Subi. He barely holds on with those giant long arms of his. Yeah, and I think if anybody were to push Toku Shoryu out of the Magashira 4 spot, it could be Abi. They might only drop him down to Magashira 4, but I, I think that 14-1's too powerful and will... Uh, its power level is too high. It It is far too high. So now to the mid bonds K at Magashira 5 West. Uh, we're going to have Onosho, who had a 9-6 and six record from Magashira 7, so getting a two-rank jump there. So far, everything's been lining up pretty well. We haven't had to hem and haw about, oh, I don't think this guy's going to go this high. Because even Toku Shoryu, like, remember my old rule of thumb, if you take your the difference between your like your wins and losses, that's about how big of a jump you would expect. Sure. So Toku Shoryu had 13 more wins and losses, so you expect a jump of 13. Magashir 17 up to Magashir 4. Yeah, so, it works yeah. out perfectly. Okay. So all of these have been lining up really well so far. Uh, Magash- I take it from your tone that that's not going to change, and it's going to stay easy. Exactly, yeah. Because <laughs> every Bonske just is so simple, and none of them ever have a spot that's just stupid difficult to figure out. But until we get to that hypothetical spot that doesn't exist, Magashira 6 on the east side, Mio Giryu had a 5-10 and ten record at Magashira 1, so I have him dropping down 5 ranks. Uh, on the west side, I've got Kagayaki jumping up from Magashira 11 after a 10-5 and five record. Uh, Magashira 7, east side, Takara Fuji got him there. Uh, he was at 7-8 and eight for Magashira 6, so just a one-rank drop for him. And on the west side, I've got Tamawashi, who had a 5-10 and 10 record from Magashira 3, so a four-rank drop for Tamawashi. And at Magashira 8 on the east side, Shohozan, he had a 7-8 and eight record from Magashira 7, so a one-rank drop from him. And then this is where we get to the mid K dead zone. And I'm calling it a dead zone because... At this point, the numbers don't work out anymore. Oh, dear. <laughs> Nobody's numbers work out that they really deserve to be promoted this high, or the people's numbers don't work out that they deserve to be demoted further than this. So we're going to get some kind of high uh, promotions and some lenient demotions coming in here. And we're going to start at Maigashira 8 on the west side with Kiti Bayama getting a 9 rank jump for his 11-4 and four record. Uh, kind of the expected range of seven there. So it's not too far out of the range, but it's a bit more than like the eight to six that I would prefer to see there. So I, I'm, I'm really not in love jumping him up really high, but what else am I going to do? Uh, Tochi Noshin had a five and 10 record. I'm not going to drop him only two ranks. May say was one and 14. Got to keep booting him down. Kota Yuki didn't even show up. Got to keep booting him down. Yeah. Really, really, really far for Kota Yuki, please. Yeah. Aoyama. I mean, he was 4-11 and 11 at the rank that I'm trying to put this guy at, so obviously he <laughs> has to drop. So yeah, all of these guys, there's just nobody else to put there. And uh, the guys that also had losing records ahead of Kiri Bayama, the best one was a 9-6 and six record from Magashira 16, so obviously 11-4 and four is going to be ranked ahead of that guy. Everybody else just had an 8-7 and seven record or has already been placed on the Bonske hmm. ahead of this point. So really, I think Kiri Bayama is the only thing that makes sense to me at this spot. Uh, once the Bonske comes out, I'm sure I'll be proven quite wrong. So moving Looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Moving on to Magashira 9. On the east side, I've got Takanosho, who had a 7-8 and eight record from the same spot. So I'm going to leave him here. Plenty of precedent for that. Not much to worry about except for what I worried about, which I'll get to after I tell you that. On the west side, we have Tochinoshin only dropping three ranks with that 5-10 and 10 record. Hmm. Uh, I brought it up on our last Bonske episode, but we do have recent precedent of Nishkigi having a 5-10 and 10 record and only dropping from, like, Magashir 11 to 13. Ah, uh, okay. So I don't want to bump up a guy seven ranks for a 9-6 and six record, uh, so I'm going to go with Tochinoshin there, especially since he did end up going against some Sanyaku guys, so they might he might get the benefit of a harder schedule than somebody ranked Magashir 16. Fair enough. So the... Hemming and hawing that I had to do for four guys uh, on this Bonske that had a 7-8 and eight record. Uh, I'm very interested to see what happens with them. So Takanosho, he had that 7-8 and eight record at Magashira 9 East last Basho, which is honestly perfect for a dead spot. You want these guys on a dead spot. You could just leave them there. Don't have right. to worry about them. 
However, we have one less Rikshi in the Sanyaku ranks this Basho than we did in the last Basho. And as we discussed extensively in our previous Bonsuke prediction, <laughs> this can cause some interesting scenarios, such as if I leave Takanosho at this same rank, technically he would be rem- receiving an order promotion. Oh, because there's one fewer guy above him. Okay. For a losing record because he will be ranked... A- Ahead I of we one more Rikshi this. on the Bonske. I was so excited to be done with these. <laughs> but I, I did look up to see if there's some recent precedent. And so Hatsu 29, we had 10 Rikshi in the Sanyaku ranks. And Koto Eko had a 7-8 and eight record for Magashira 15 West with only two Rikshi ranked below him. And so we had Kisei Nosato retire. There's nobody that can fill that slot. So we dropped down to 9 Rikshi in the Sanyaku ranks for Haru of 2019, and Kotoweko was ranked again at Magashir 15 West with three Rikshi ranked behind him. So I think with only a difference of one person in the Sanyaku ranks, we're not going to worry too much about how many people are uh, ahead or behind you in the order, as a difference of one doesn't make too big of a difference. Last time where it was a difference of three, right. that might have been taken more into consideration. Bigger deal. But I'm going to take our cue from how they treated Kota Waco in Haru of 2019 and treat Takanosho and three other 7 and 8 Rikshi the same way. So let's move on to Magashira 10. On the east side, we have Sada no Umi, who is our second guy with a 7-8 and eight record that we're keeping at that same rank. And on the west side, we're going to have that 9-6 and six Magashira 16 guy that we were talking about jump up all the way to Magashira 10 west. Uh, so he's getting pretty lucky jump. Of, Tochi Ozan, you mean. What did I say? Uh, you, you just didn't mention his name. Oh, yeah, Tochi Ozan. Uh, getting a, ra- a jump of six numbered ranks. And when I first saw that, I didn't really feel too good about that. And then I looked up the history and saw that the last time that we had a Magashira 16 with nine wins, it was Dai Shoho about a year ago, and he jumped up to Magashira 9. Oh, wait. Okay, then. Yeah, you're fine. (laughs) (laughs) I actually did a little bit more, like, digging into it, and it was more common for a 9 and 6 Magashira 16 to end up at, like, Magashir 9, 10, 11, then it would be like what you would expect him to be like 14 or 13. Oh, really? I think it's because when you're down in the double digit ranks, you're going to have more guys with losing records and like less guys from Jurio that have records that can go up and take those spots. And so there's usually, this is kind of usually where the dead zone ends up is at in the tens area. And so I think that kind of contributes to that is just, they need to pull somebody up. So they're pulling further back than they would have to, uh, further up the bonds. That makes sense. And we're also like, since you build the bonds from the top, it, I guess it kind of makes sense. There'd be a point where it starts to break down and it seems like around the 20 to 30 people down Mark is where it kind of just turns into a dumpster fire sometimes. Yeah. More than sometimes. I would say about Most 90% of the, time. of the time. Yeah, almost every time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on to Magashir 11. Uh, on the east side, we're going to have Chio Tairyu, who is the third guy in a row with a 7-8 and eight record that we are keeping at the same rank. And then Terutsu Yoshi. He is our last guy to get some dead zone luck. I have him jumping up three numbered ranks with an 8-7 and seven record. So nothing crazy. Magashir 14 to Magashir 11. But a little bit luckier than you would expect somebody with an 8-7 and seven record. So now we're just going to get to the bottom of the bonds K where things start to make a little bit more sense, uh, like promotion and demotion wise. Magashira 12 on the east side, I have Ishiura. He had a six and nine record for Magashira 10 last time. So just a drop of two. And on the west side, we have Ikioi. He's actually also getting a jump of three ranks with an eight and seven record for Magashira 15. Uh, but that didn't quite make it into the dead zone because everybody else around him made sense. Magashira 13. On the east side, we have Koto Shogiku. He is our last guy that is going to stay in his same rank with that 7-8 and eight record. And on the west side, we have Aoyama landing here. I wanted to drop him further. Um, I bet you did. <laughs> it's only a 5-numbered rank drop after a 4-11 and 11 Basho. You'd ex- usually expect a little bit more than that. It's not unprecedented by any means for him to only drop 5 ranks, so I feel pretty good about that. Um, just because there's really nobody else to take that spot. It would either have to be like Tsudagishi or Chiyomaru, 
who were at Magashira 12, but then they would only be dropping one rank for a six and nine record or to be pulling up Kaisei uh, three ranks for an eight, seven, which we've done. But I feel like Aoyama being higher up the bonds K, maybe he'll get some preferential treatment. So there's room for Aoyama to drop down. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so at Magashira 14, on the east side, we're going to have Tsurugisho, and on the west side, we're going to have Chiyomaru. Both of these guys had 6-9 and nine records from the Magashira 12 rank, uh, so just dropping them both down two, so they land side-by-side side again on the Bonske. No reason to break them up. No reason at all. Magashira 15, well, I mean, we'll see the Bonske committee do that. They've been doing that recently and breaking my heart. <laughs> I, th- I thought it was a hard and fast rule, but no, they found plenty of instances. No, of just it was a soft sh- and slow rule. <laughs> to just shove a guy in there for literally no reason. Uh, Magashir 15 on the east side, we're going to have Kaisei uh, just jumping up one rank after his 8-7 and seven record. And on the west side, I have Azumaru, who will be dropping down just a half rank after a 7-8 and eight record from Magashir 15 east. Uh, Magashir 16, this is where we're going to see... Some of the guys that were injured in the Basho and some of our Jurio promotees start to pop up. So on the east side, I have Mace. He had one win at Magashira 5. So I have him dropping down 12 ranks all the way to Magashira 16 east. And on the west side, I have Nishkigi, who will be jumping up from Jurio 4 with an 11 and 4 record. Uh, so. As with any guy with zero wins, one win, two wins, that's high up on the bonds K, it, it's a crapshoot as to where they're ending up. He could really end up anywhere. I just kind of use it like once I've run out of people to fill that spot, that's kind of where your Jurio promotees and uh, huge demotions start to go because it just doesn't make sense mathematically for anybody else at this point. Maigashir is 17. On the east side, I've got Shimano Umi. He had a 6-9 and nine record from Maigashir 14, so a three-rank drop for him. And Koto Yuki on the west side of Maigashir is 17. Couldn't drop him down just a little further? I thought about it. He's, he's in a very similar spot as Tomokaze from Kyushu. Uh, he was ranked Maigashir 3. He had no wins. Uh, so why did I have Tomokaze? Well, I didn't actually have Tomokaze going to Jerio. I had Tomokaze stick it around as the Bonskeg committee that kicked him down further than I thought he should. Those jerks. So why did they do that to Tomokaze? But I don't think they're going to do the same to Koto Yuki. Uh, a couple of reasons, but mostly there's ac- the difference of the number of Rikshi that were in the Sanyaku ranks at the time that Tomokaze was there. So he was actually further down the rankings than Koto Yuki oh, was like ranking this wise? Basho. Yeah. And so Tomokaze only ended up at Jurio 1 East. He was a top Jurio guy, so he just barely... Like, I didn't even have Tokushoryu in this Bonds K, so <laughs> the magic never could have even happened, because I had Toku- Tomokaze taken up that last spot. But so Tomokaze barely made it into Jurio, while uh, Koto Yuki is technically has three more people behind him, so he has more cushion to fall and still land in the Makauchi division. All right, I'll take it, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> and introducing, for the first time since 1959, <laughs> we have the Maigashira 18 rank. Oh, my God. And we're only going to have one guy on the east side, and I've got Dayamami going there. Uh, he is 11-4 and four from Jurio 6. Uh, had to kind of wrestle with if it was going to be Dayamami or Koto Nowaka, who had an 8-7 and seven record from Jurio 2. But in the end, I'm rewarding the guy that had the better record. Uh, it, it, mathematically, it makes sense for both of these guys. Dayamami would jump up six ranks with 11-4 record. Koto Nowaka would jump up two ranks with an 8-7 and seven record. Uh, but in the end, I decided to give the benefit of the doubt to the guy with the better record. So I'm going with Dayamami as our second Jurio promotee. And that, that wraps up our Bonske prediction for the Haru Basho. Some quick mental math here. Yeah. The uh, uh, Maigashira 18 rank, if it hasn't shown up since 1959, and the retirement age in the Sumo uh, Association is 65, the oldest people in the entire organization were no more than four years old the last time there was a Maigashira 18. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> And yeah, I'd, 
as far as I know, there used to be more guys in the Makauchi division, but it's 42 guys in the Makauchi division. That's just how it works. Yeah, that, that's a lock-in kind of thing, like yeah. a hard and fast rule. So the lowest rank that we could have if somehow, and we're probably going to see that time this year, just how it's been going. If we didn't have <laughs> any Yokozuna or Ozeki, you're guaranteed to have uh, Sekiwake and Komosubi four ranks there and so the lowest that we could see would be what Magashira 19 19 west would be the bottom rank then yeah so unless they and I can't imagine that they would to just make sure hey we can't get this far down in the rankings let's make sure we only have 40 <laughs> people in the Makuchi division no so I, I'm sure they would rather go for the weird 19 if they had to but <laughs> yeah but yeah I, I would be shocked if we ever got to that situation yep so we mentioned two guys being promoted up from Jurio. We have Dayamami and uh, Nishkigi are my predictions, and so that means we got to kick two guys down to Jurio. Well, not necessarily. We're kicking one guy down to Jurio, and that's Koto Eko for having a two and thirteen record at Magashira thirteen. Uh, real quick, uh, he should get an honorable mention for uh, having the worst record of anybody who wrestled the whole tournament. That is true. That is very true. He didn't. Uh, he didn't have an uh, you know an injury worth pulling out over. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he, we can say there's no asterisk that he was absolutely the worst. Yep. The <laughs> other worst record would have been Aoyama at four and, and eleven. Four and eleven. Yeah. So yeah, and then a handful of five and tens there. Yeah, a couple of those. Good on you, Kota Waco. At a boy. <laughs> and, Nowhere to go but up. <laughs> well, I mean, there's Makushta. Technically, there are several places to go down. <laughs> So, if we're only kicking one guy down to Jurio, but bringing two guys up, what gives, Jake? I don't know, Ryan. What does give? Uh, Goedo retiring gives. Ah, uh, yeah, we talked about that a little bit. We did indeed. So, yeah, Goedo retired before the Bonske was made, so they are able to uh, take him out. That he's not going to show up on the Bonske as Intai, because sometimes, like maybe a guy. Waits a week and then retires. Well, the Bonske's already been made at that point, so he'll show up on the Bonske. Uh, But Goedo got it in in time so that he will not be on the Bonske. So overall, I feel a lot better about this one than I did the last time because, I mean, especially with hindsight, uh, I did real bad last time, (laughs) and I also just did not feel good. Uh, there's a lot less potential for me to be significantly off on as many Rikshi as I was last right. time. There's potential for me to be off on a few guys, and I won't tell Jake who those are because he needs to figure that out for himself. <laughs> but I, I feel like there's not just such a dearth of guys that I can be off by yeah. a lot. Just, yeah, like last time I, I'd say there was probably like 10 to 15 guys that you feel like you felt like could have been two or more ranks off, you know, somewhere in yeah. that range. This time, I'm willing to bet there's probably only five or six that are that much uncertainty. Yeah. Yeah. That actually sounds right, five or six. So, Jake, who do you think will be my worst guess on this Bonske? I'm kind of tired of negativity, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess who is going to be your best guess. No. Who is the most right on? No. And I think that's going to be Takakesho. <laughs> I think you've got Takakesho right where he's supposed to be. <laughs> Bring the negativity, all the hate of all the caucus okay, stuff good, that has I, happened. Uh, yeah, I couldn't the hold, past... it, hold it in too much yeah, more. Just let it flow. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be one of the one of the big movers um, this time around. I think either Aoyama is going to drop further than you thought somehow, or Kiribayama maybe not as big of a promotion. Um, I think what I'm going to go with is Mese. I think that Mese has a very real shot of going all the way down to Jurio. You think so? I think so. He has one win, yeah, but only one win. And I it kind of depends on how much better is one win than zero. Obviously, it is better, but like by how much? Yeah. So I think it's going to be an awfully similar situation to Tomokaze last time around, just barely getting bumped out of uh, Makuchi. I think I'll take that one for my, for my uh, you know, make fun of you as much as possible kind of pick. All right, that's fair. That is decent shot of hitting. I, I think the one that I'm feeling most iffy on is Kiri Bayama myself. Um, yeah, just jumping up, what is it, eight ranks or nine ranks, 4-11-4 four four record at Magashir yeah. 17. I don't feel the greatest about that, but like I said, there's not, there wasn't a whole lot of options there, but I'm sure the Bonsai Committee could do something stupid like they did last time and fill it up. Yeah, and, and there's a, like we were saying before, there's there's a handful of five and tens 
And, you know, as, as soon as either of your numbers is a double digit, that just makes it that much harder to pick. Yeah. Before we wrap up this episode, uh, Jake and I are going to start a little contest between the two of us. So this is mostly just for Jake and I to have personal accountability for <laughs> our listeners, and this will actually make us do it. But we're not in bad shape. We're not in terrible shape. But we want to be in better shape. Right. And yeah. we're both terrible at sticking to diets and workout plans or anything like that. So Jake knows me, and I'm probably the most competitive person on this podcast. Uh, no, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so naturally, <laughs> uh, that means we have to make it a contest. Yes, and that's probably the most likely way that I am going to actually stick to any form of diet (laughs) because i can't let jake win anything right so we both have we're both on the we did a little bit of math based on ryan being bigger than me but uh fatter and taller Ah! he can be both (laughs) um but we're both in the neighborhood of like 10 to 12 pounds that we're looking to lose so we have a couple benchmarks the first person to lose five pounds is the winner of round one Mm -hmm. and then eight pounds and then our goal weight um so for me, I got to get under 160. Ryan's got to get under 185. And whoever does that, we're, we naturally, for a high stakes bet, we need to buy stakes. Yes. So I, if, if I lose, I will take your lovely wife and yourself out to dinner and buy you both some stakes. And I expect the same in return for my wife and myself. Yep. Unless I lose. <laughs> but um, <laughs> for the round one and two, for the five pound and the eight pound goal, we are going to... Uh, maybe clear out the bowl of punishments a little bit of some of the harder ones, but we'll, we'll take a draw from the bowl of punishments to see uh, whoever loses each of those rounds has to do a punishment on whatever our next podcast is. So a little mini punishment, hopefully the next month or two is going to be a little bit extra punishy. Yes. Which is what we like to see here. So yeah, like, like Ryan said, we just want to, we just wanted to tack it onto this episode since the two of us are getting together anyways. Uh, and we are the only two that actually have that much weight to lose on this podcast. Yeah, Flarek is, he's doing good, and Max always working out, so. Yeah, I, I mean, to be fair, Flarek could probably lose 10 pounds just by shaving his body. That's true, yeah, that's an easy weight loss for him immediately. Yes, of course. Mac, um, unfortunately, does not have that option available to him. And no, he is as smooth as a baby seal. Yes, I saw him in the onsen in Japan and can confirm. <laughs> Oh, good. And since neither of them listen to this podcast, it'll just be up to uh, Katie. Don't tell the rest of the crew. Yeah, <laughs> because this is funnier this way. But yeah, we're we're not going to like take up time in our review in our main episodes. This is probably just stick to like the Bonds K episodes at the very end. So if you want to skip these portions, that's fine. But we're going to give updates just so Jake and I can once again keep each other accountable and keep ourselves accountable to the listeners here so that we might actually stick to something for once in our lives. Yep. So we'll see if it lasts until our next Bonds K episode, but that's at the soonest. That is when we would bother you again about it. Yeah. So did you mention that we're going to weigh in tomorrow morning? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll start tomorrow morning. Okay. And we'll count that as our official starting weight. So, yeah, if you're interested in that at all, keep listening. If not, you could have turned this off like five minutes ago. But nobody listens to the last five minutes of podcast. That's true. So let's get out the portion that nobody ever listens to. Uh, If you enjoyed this episode, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. Find us on all of them social medias and our blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. Any questions, comments, or... What's the other one? Corrections. Corrections. I always want to say concerns, but I know that's not right. Uh, there's I mean, plenty of concerns. There's plenty though. of concerns, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can shoot us an email at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 805-613-7866. That is 805-613-SUMO. And before we go, the Bonske will be released on February the 24th, and the Basho is going to start on Sunday, March 8th. We will see you at least a couple of days after February 24th for the What's it called? A review. Bonske review. That's Bonske what it's called. review and diet complaining. Yes. <laughs>